In this video, we're going to be talking about the Carbon Graphene Battery Mega Project. This is an introduction to the entire project, an overview of what we intend to do. I'm going to be talking pretty quickly and packing a lot in, so here we go. As we develop it, these projects, some of the projects are really short. We do them in one sitting during a day. Uh, other ones we do in multiple stages, either over a day or over a week. But this project is long term. We're going to be doing a whole, doing it over, basically every week in the summer camp. And each week's part, though, will be standalone. They, a student can come to just one week and get a lot out of it and enjoy it, or they can come week to week to week and see how it builds. The separate part will build on each other. Hopefully, by the end of the summer, we can create the best performing battery. When you make a project for the summer camp, though, there are certain requirements. One of them is that it must be fun. The kids have to enjoy themselves. They have to have visible results. It can't take too long. It has to be easy for them to do. And importantly, it has to use safe ingredients. Now, the way I've defined safe is that it's very limited in terms of steps that must be done by the teacher, that they, they the kids can do it themselves and not have to have the teacher do it. I prefer ingredients, if possible, that the kids can even swallow that without hurting themselves. Very, very safe ingredients. And I'm willing to accept lesser results if, by using safe ingredients. Um, and it has to be able to be done in our normal rooms. We're not going to create a clean room or some special for this project, they're going to be learning about the scientific method, how to test a hypothesis. They're going to learn about how to conduct experiments and learn the lab equipment. They're going to be learning about how to document what they've done and what happened. They're going to be learning about electricity and batteries and capacitors. And they're going to be learning how to use a database built on uh, Excel or Google Sheets, how to do the sorting and searching and, and lay that out. The goals for this project are uh, broken up. They're easy ones to achieve. Going to make a carbon-based energy storage device. I've been calling it a battery. It might be a capacitor at certain stages. That's fine. It'll still store electricity. Uh, we're going to try all sorts of different techniques. We're going to try all sorts of different materials. We're going to understand how to document our experiments. Now, if possible, there's a stretch goal. And that is, hopefully, by the end of the summer, we can make a device that has significant energy density, that we can show that if you do this, 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 and put it together, that you can make a, a significant energy density device. And I, that's a hope. Uh, the equipment needed is pretty simple, and it depends on exactly how you do the subreactions. Uh, I'm going to be making my own sonicator, which is like a, a ultrasonic uh, cleaner, if you will. Uh, it shakes things and, and can break them up. I'm going to be making my own ball mill, which is like a uh, rock tumbler, if you will, except that you put steel balls into it and it can, or ceramic balls, and it can grind a powder to very, very fine uh, stages. I'll be making videos about how I do both of those, just because I think there's some general interest. We'll need various materials. Um, Again, what materials we need will depend on which sub-projects we do and how we do them. One interesting material is number four. This particular glue will be used to lay things down on the paper, and it is a glue that dries waterproof. It's very much like a white glue. It's non-toxic, and it's, it's very much like the kind of white glue kids have been using in school. But it dries completely class one waterproof, so it's good for when, if we're trying to keep layers separate from each other. The other one is citric acid. Citric acid that we're using is food grade. It is absolutely safe for the kids. It's included in various foods and uh, should be no problem at all for them. I believe it's made of limes, uh, from limes or lemon, something like that. And so again, it's a safe, safe material. The way we're physically going to build them, start off with a stiffener. Uh, plastic stiffener that I'm, I'm printing on the 3D printer, but think of something about like a guitar pick. Um, and then there's a piece of paper, and on that piece of paper, on the back of it, I've put clear shipping tape to make it strong even when it's wet. So you just lay that tape down and boom, now you have a, a, a paper though that, that can withstand, it's still light and flexible, but it uh, can withstand being torn and, and moved around. So that, that should work really well. Then you have the paper, and on top of the paper we will 
paint and, and put our active material different for different batteries um, based on, you know, using the glue and you maybe you sprinkle this on the top or, or press it in, various ways of putting the active material on. And then we have a layer with the separator with the electrolyte, different papers that we can use for that, paper towels, tissue papers, uh, copy paper, all sorts of different papers that we can use and then the same materials in advance. So we, very simple construction, very easy and quick to go together. The active area that we're looking at right now is uh, about three centimeters square. So a, a small little active area, but big enough that the kids should absolutely see voltages um, and currents that display something really happening. Interestingly, with this design, we can extend it uh, pretty easily into what's called a bipolar plate battery. And we can have multiple layers of this battery um, with the ink that we're, the uh, uh, glue that we're using, it's waterproof, so it'll keep the layers separate. And so we can just include multiple layers of the paper and active material, boom, 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 on top of each other, and put it all together into one battery. In both cases, we use a clamp, clamp them tight, and in this case, to keep the battery from drying out, we could actually uh, put some marine epoxy. Marine epoxy dries even when it's wet along the outside and keep it uh, as a sealed unit. So this could get really interesting and allow us to build a battery that has higher voltages and uh, interesting characteristics. One of the things we're going to be doing a lot in this class is carbonization. That's uh, taking organic material, removing some of the other things, turning it into carbon material. The typically done on a kiln with nitrogen, we don't have a kiln. So we're going to be using a method called hydrothermal carbon, uh, carbonization. Uh, wa hydro water, thermal heat. Uh, basically you use water, low levels but significant of pressure and about 200 degrees Celsius, which is about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and you put them in a, uh, typically it's done in a pressure vessel, typically with some sort of catalyst to help it go faster. Uh, the pressure vessel that many people have built is a piece of pipe with a couple of Teflon gas uh, ends, a four, in, four inch pipe or so, and two, uh, I mean a four inch long pipe, about two inch pipe. And then you put gas tape on it, put the ends on, end caps on, and you put that in the oven, in a normal oven. Uh, you can buy pressure vessels as well, but that pressure vessel is fine for withstanding the, the modest pressures that we're dealing with. Um, I'd rather not have, have to do that. That takes several hours to cook, as, as it were, in the oven, um, and so I'd rather not do it. And so the method that we're going to start off trying is actually called uh, microwave uh, carbonization, and, and you use it in a microwave oven, again with a catalyst. You put in a little pressure, a uh, little oven, and give it a little pressure, and it's fast. It can be as little as 15 minutes, depending on what you're doing and what you're using. And I see some people, some papers, where they seem to be using citric acid very successfully as the catalyst, and so it's a win-win in a lot of ways. It's fast, it's easy, and uh, safe. Lots of different things that we can carbonize to use in the batteries. Everything from coffee grounds to peanut shells, sugar and banana peels, and so we're just going to have all sorts of fun with that and playing around with what we what we put inside. Uh, one of the elements that we're going to be trying is a weird, wonderful elephant element called graphene. Graphene is very conductive; it's very strong, and it's only one atom thick. It's a layered element, or oh, not element, but material. Pure graphite is composed of multiple graphene layers, and especially when you see it called flake graphite, you're seeing it break apart. And there's various ways to isolate those graphene layers, most of which are very complex and involve significant solvents and things like that. But there is a wonderful guy, uh, Robert Murray Smith, who has come up with a method uh, that uses acetone and water and he put it on a YouTube video. He shares all sorts of interesting information about the, the, these subjects. And he put it on the uh, YouTube, the easiest way to make high quality graphene. You take water and acetone and you mix them together. Either alone, neither one reacts with graphite, but you put them together in this quantity and they help to break the uh, 
the graphite apart into the graphene layers. And then you put, it, put that watery mixture into a uh, blender, or in our case, we have a blender that we can use, but in our case, we'll try the sonicator, and uh, that uh, shakes it apart into the different layers. So we're going to see. But I, I have high hopes that we can create some beautiful, high-quality graphene in this. So you can see, we have lots of variations, lots of different things the kid can do. They're going to have a blast. We're not going to run out by the end of summer. In fact, we can probably do this for a couple, three years uh, of doing all these variations. And so we, we're going to be doing that and having a blast, trying to see. And the crazier, the better, in the sense of you never know what's going to work. Our first week, we'll do it a little different. Our first week, we're going to, I'm trying to decide on exactly how we're going to do it, but we're going to all do the same thing. And that way we can see battery to battery, child to child, or camper to camper, we call them, um, how the batteries vary, how, how they're different, how they're the same, how much variation we're seeing in electrical performance. And that way we can, it's basically establishing how many significant figures we have in terms of our measurements and our construction techniques uh, for identifying which material is the best. If you want to know more about this project, please subscribe. We're going to be posting more videos uh, about how to make the materials, how to make the, how we're doing, um, how things are working out for us, how we're building our lab equipment, all sorts of things. So if you subscribe to my, this channel, you'll be notified automatically. I hope this is going to be helpful for you, and thanks a lot. Have a great day.